Today, if I can use for a topic, it would be stand firm in the faith. Stand firm in the faith. Look at somebody today. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, stand firm in the faith. Things will happen in life that will challenge your faith. The question is not if, but when. As sure as the sun will rise tomorrow, you will face tough times. It is unavoidable. It is unescapable. It is inevitable. Can I preach today? Sooner or later, if not already, you will be up against a health, money, job, family, or marriage problem in this life. Can I preach? In this life, you will face opposition when you least expect it. There will be times in your life when things will take an unexpected and unpleasant turn. And you will find yourself in a place where you don't want to be. Job is witness to the unexpected challenges life can bring. Job said, for the thing I fear has overtaken me and what I dreaded has befallen me. He lost about everything around him without knowing why, but he kept his faith in God. Whether you experience the loss of a love and a health crisis or disappointments, big or small, it can be a it can be difficult to persist in faith. Oh, it's easy to stand firm in faith when things are going good, money is in the bank, and your health is doing good. You got a stable job, a, a nice home, a strong marriage. You, you got peace and joy. But what I want to know today is can you stand firm in the faith when the world around you is turned upside down? Yes, sir. Can I read? We're living, we're living, we're living in a time when we have got to stay rooted and grounded in God. It's the only way we are going to get through. We have got to be like a tree planted by the water. Jeremiah 17, chapter 8, verse says, Blessed the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is, is the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river. What are you saying, baby? In other words, if we put all of our trust and hope in God, he'll take care of us. Yeah, God can keep us when we can't keep ourselves. If you're rooted in God, and the time, because God can do exceedingly above, and y'all ain't gonna talk to me, y'all about yourself. He can do beyond all you can think or imagine. If you are rooted, yeah. I came all the way uh, from Coconut Grove, right down the street, tell you, Macedonia, to tell you that there is nothing too hard for God. Nothing. Nothing. You gotta stand firm in faith and trust God. Yeah, I, I, I know I'm not the only one this morning who has decided to stand firm in God. I, I won't be moved. I, I'm going to stay in the race. No matter what happens, I will trust God. The song says, I searched all over. I couldn't find no. I looked high and I, I searched low and I couldn't find no. But I came to tell you today that you're in good hands with God. Nobody can keep you like God. I wish I had some folk in here that can testify 
preacher, I know what you're talking about. Can't nobody keep you. Can't nobody hold you. Can't nobody love you. Like God. Ain't nobody Yes, Lord. When you're faced with challenges, to your faith, the Bible encourages us to stand firm in faith and trust in God. There are some things you need to know when you are standing firm in faith. Just allow me just a few more minutes. I want to tell you how to stand firm in faith. The first thing you need to know, brothers and sisters, is when you're standing firm in faith, you have to know what you are standing on. Amen. Amen. Psalms 40, verse 1 says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mud. Y'all will talk to me. And he set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. God reached down to save us. The old folks say he reached way down there. Picked me up. He lifted us up out of the pit and set us on the rock. That rock is Jesus. He's that firm place on which we just said. There is, there isn't any more solid foundation to stand than on Jesus. When the rain, the floods, and the winds of life start to beat you down, you won't fall because you are founded and you're standing on the rock of Jesus. Yeah, he won't let you fall. He's the same yesterday and forever. He can I preach today? Yeah. He, he, he's not like our, our fellow friend who stops being a friend in hard times. Y'all don't talk to him. Yeah, he's not like our friend who stopped being a friend because our friend think we have more than what y'all would talk to me. Jesus is a friend to the friendless. He's a mother to the motherless. He's a father to the fatherless. He's a husband to the husband. He will never leave you. No, he will say The old church mother sang a song. What a friend. You got to go through something. 
So, so, so count it all joy when you fall into all kinds of temptation, knowing that the, the testing of your faith produces endurance. When you're standing firm in faith, Sister Matthews, you have to trust God and not lean into your own understanding. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. And his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are higher than ours. His ways are higher than that. Our thoughts and our ways are no match for God. God way, he knows the end and the beginning while we only see a short of the part of the now. He already knows why. He, he, he already knows while we are yet searching for answers. While you're trying to figure it out, he's already going to talk back to you. We, we cannot lean into our own understanding. And if you trust God, He is dependent on your own understanding, then your faith is going to waver. You got to trust God, not your own understanding. You can't trust Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. You got to trust. You can't trust what your friends say, but you got to trust what God says. Proverbs says to trust in the Lord with all. Trust in God, He will give you a peace that will surpass all understanding. He'll give you a peace that will guard your heart, guard your mind, and your thoughts. And ask me how I know, and I'll tell you because I tried God for myself. And I'm a living witness that He will work everything out for your good because He worked everything out for my matter of fact, He's still working everything out for your Did they deserve to be going through what they were going through? Paul and Silas were praising and singing hymns to God. As a result of their praise, the prison doors flew open and the chains broke the government pass. All because of praise and thanksgiving. To God, the chains came off, and they were no longer burned. Oh, y'all ain't catching that. Paul and Simon's got a breakthrough in the midst of y'all. Y'all ain't talk to me. In the midst of suffering, we talked about that in Sunday school. That that he got a breakthrough in the midst of y'all. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. It's not good. Get out of that trap, please. Get out of that prison situation and just give God praise. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you get that addiction on it, on your door, just praise God on it. When the doctor gives you a bad report, just put a praise on it. When the bank man pick up your car, put a praise on it. When they walk out on you, put a praise on it. Wait a minute. 
can be free. Yeah, put it around with the numbers. To the God of power, he will hold my God in the world. When you're standing firm in faith, you can't waver between faith and doubt. You have to know what you believe and why you believe. So that when challenges come, you can stand firm in faith. Why did you follow Jesus? Why did you serve him? What do you believe about God and his word? And sometimes Christians waver in faith because they are struggling with following God and following the world. Oh, y'all be quiet. God is asking you today, how long will you waver between two opinions? Elijah told the people, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. How long are you going to waver if, if God be God or if Facebook be God, then follow him. Y'all will talk to me. If your baby daddy never be God, well, how long will you waver? If you know that God is God and He is good, there is nothing to question. Especially in what we are going through all over the world today. Now is not the time to second guess God. We need God like never before. We have to hold all to God's changing man. Only God is God. And He alone knows what is best for us. I always have some old saints that do. Don't allow, don't allow the trials, tribulations, temptations, and hardship that you're going through right now make you struggle to believe in God. Got to stand firm in your faith. Abraham had a great faith. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. The Book of Romans, fourth chapter, twenty first, twentieth verse says, "He did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith." And he gave God glory. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Being persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Abraham wasn't perfect. We know that. We talked about that today. He wasn't perfect. Sister Widow had some other names for him, but I dare not put it in my message. But he was he was fully persuaded. Is anyone fully persuaded? That God is able to do that thing which He has promised. I'm, I'm fully persuaded that God can do anything but fail. Come on, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the 37th chapter, the 20 verse, 27th verse says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too difficult for me? There is nothing too hard for God. Can I preach today? I got one more point, and I'll get out of your way. You start to look at the fight. When you're standing firm in the faith, you have to resist the devil. And watch this. You got to resist the devil, Toya, and you got to resist all of his lies. While you're standing firm in faith, the enemy will try to say things to you that are contrary to God's word. He tries to discourage you and turn you away. From God. It's almost sound like church folks, but we're talking about the devil. First Peter says, the fifth chapter, a verse says, it says, be sober. It says, be sober and vigilant, pray God, because your adversary, the devil, walks about 
like a roaring lion looking, seeking whom he may devour. So you got to resist him, stand firm in faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. You must make the choice to cast down those thoughts that are against God's word. When thoughts of fear, doubt, discouragement, or an anxiety try to creep in, you have to guard your mind against the deception of the enemy. Choose to think godly thoughts. Y'all want to talk to you. Scripture tells us to fill our minds with those things that are lovely, pure, and of good report. Speak the word of God over that situation. You have to say things like, I shall live and not go talk to me. I'm above and not beneath. I am the head and yeah, yeah. everything is working out for my good. Yeah, you have to speak those things. And sometimes you have to speak to the people those things. So this is how you to we going to that one today. When you are standing firm in faith, you have to stand up. You have to fight. God gave us spiritual armor to help us stand. When you feel a little challenge in your faith, you have to suit up and take a stand. The enemy doesn't want you to trust God. So you got to stand up against him. Yes. Yes. The book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, it's okay if I preach from the Bible today. Oh, yeah. Sixth chapter of Ephesians, the 13th verse says, Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, how many of y'all know the day is coming? Yeah. Yeah, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Be armed with the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of peace, and the shield of faith. Paul told Timothy to fight the good fight of faith. You got to stand up and fight. I am the word of God. Notice I said the word of God. I know how some of y'all are fighting now. Y'all use that other language. But fight with the word of God. Fight with prayer. Fight with praise. I dare you the next time the devil get on your nerves, the next time the devil try to fight you, I dare you to break out of the shower. Watch what the devil do. That that devil get out of there. He said, what's wrong with you? What what, what is wrong with you? I'm trying to discourage and cheat up that praise of God. And you might be saying, 
there, there will be trials. As we are going through, we must stand firm in faith. We have to be rooted and grounded in God. He will be with us. And whatever it is that we're facing, but we have to be rooted. Look at somebody and say, you got to be rooted. The only way you're going to be able to be rooted in God, you're going to have to commit to being more engaged with God. I'm not just talking about coming to church on Sunday. That's the least you could do. Somebody say, well, preacher, I sacrifice every Sunday to come to church. But I want you to know today that it is not a sacrifice that you come to church. It's a privilege that you come. Somebody wish they could come to church. Somebody wish they could come to Sunday school with Bible study. But you have to make a sacrifice. You, you got to wait till you have time and you're not busy. But it is a privilege to give God a praise. But you have to be rooted. Being rooted doesn't mean coming once a month. Being rooted watches, I'm going to mess a lot of y'all up. That doesn't mean because you're a good tire Peter. That doesn't mean being rooted. You can pay God all the money you want to pay and you still go to hell. As a matter of fact, God is necessarily not looking for your money. It's his anyway. He has the riches stored up for us. But we have to take time to get rooted in God. The reason you're going through what you're going through is not because uh, somebody just want to mistreat you. God trying to give you a sign to wake you up. It's time for you to get rooted in God. The reason you can't sleep at night, you can't overcome whatever that simple thing is, and it is simple. I'm coming to tell you, it's a simple thing. Because there's nothing too hard for God. It's just that because your faith is at an all-time low, you have magnified it. Because you're not rooted in God. Am I making sense? So we're, we're living in a time now, and I know y'all don't like pastor they need to talk like that. Y'all think he's talking crazy. But God is God is tired of us playing playing church. This church is not about Pastor Bailey. It's not about the ability of Pastor Bailey. This church is not about First Lady Monique. I can pick on her. We stay together. It's not about you. But it's about God. And God said, told me to tell you, he's sick and tired of y'all thinking it's all about y'all. The reason why our faith is at an all time low is because we need to change our mindset. The only way we're going to prosper, the only way we're going to be blessed, is we have to stand firm in our faith. Get connected to God. Get rooted in God. And then you have to stay with God. We can't. We can't celebrate Jesus only in December and January. Skip a month or two and then go to Easter. Take a break off. And then, you know, the church don't really church during the summertime. Y'all know how we do. That's our vacation time. And God says he's sick and tired of it. He, I'm not telling you not to go on vacation. I'm not saying that. But God needs 100% of you. Not only when it's convenient for you, not only when uh, you need something from God, God needs you 
every day, every Sunday, every Sunday school, every Bible study. That's the only way we're going to overcome these problems we're going through. That's the only way we're going to get through these economic crises, community issues. It's not because we hire the best lawyers. Sometimes you can hire Jack Connor from you still lose. In God in heaven. Am I making sense? I know some folks that can buy two or three lawyers and still lose a case. And how do you know that if you got God on your side, you don't even, all you got to do is just turn over to Jesus. When, as you get up in the morning, whatever the problem is, if, if it's a problem that, that, that requires a judge, the judge, the, the court, the clerk will call you in the morning and say, you know what, judge say, he throwing it out. He ain't got time for it. Y'all ain't talking. If it's a health issue, the, the doctor will call you and say, you know what, we thought we saw, we ain't seen. That, that job you're looking for, you you try to figure out if your resume is good enough, and you add stuff and put lines on your resume. Don't worry about that. If you give it to God, turn it on to Jesus, you still qualify you. But you gotta stay rooted. You gotta stay connected when God bless you. You have to stay connected. You have to stay connected. I don't care how. Because I want to be able to be humble enough to stay connected to God. We gotta, we gotta be committed. God is looking for you, 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 you. He's looking for you. He needs you. He needs you. He needs you to, to get people saved, deliver them from in your house, on your job, in the community that Pastor Baby can't get to. I don't know, but you know. And he needs you to be connected, fitted, and rooted in the word so that we can be disciples. He's looking for disciples. He's looking for disciples. And he needs you. All of the building today, if you're not saved, you want to be a part of this church, you want to give your life to Christ, you say, Pastor, I don't want to be a part of the church, I just want to be saved. Come to Jesus now. Why do you have time? He'll give you a brand new life. He'll give you a brand new start. He says that they hear my voice, you are not your heart. Just come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Why do you have time? So tomorrow's not promised. As a matter of fact, this afternoon is not promised to none of us. He says he'll come back like a thief in the night. You ought to be ready when he comes. You ought to be ready. You ought to be ready. Go that be one. If you're listening to mine virtually, you want to be Come now, come now, come now, come now, come now. As our musicians sing, our choir singing, somebody sing. Let the people sing today. Whatever you want, whatever you want, whatever you want, whatever you want. Hold to Christ. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Why? Sing that song we're going to sing.